Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Chapman, for that prayer. Uh, we're thankful tonight again. We're able to open up the word of God tonight and uh, to see what thus saith the Lord as we continue our thought and our subject uh, on this series of lessons, spiritual warfare. Uh, I believe I don't believe that we're going to finish uh, this series this month. And that's OK. We're still we'll continually. I want to make sure that everybody have a proper understanding of what's being taught uh, as it relates to uh, spiritual warfare. Now, as we get started, um, I want to know, uh, does anybody have any questions so far? Uh, as we've been talking about spiritual warfare, we've been talking about uh, this real battle that we're in. Does anybody have any questions uh, up to this point? Does anybody have any questions? I know I've talked to many of you all outside of um, our study. We talked, you know, we talked, you called me and you had questions. So I want to make sure I answer any questions uh, as we go farther along in our study that I can try to answer before we go to some other things as we talk about spiritual warfare. Sister Hawkins, you have your hand up. Yes, sir. Yes. I was uh, reading over my notes. I could have wrote it wrong or I could have interpreted it incorrectly. So I want clarification. I know that you said that um, Elohim I think you said everybody who who is deceased is an Elohim. Right. Anything, anything that's right. Anything that is not anything that's in the spiritual realm is an Elohim. Okay. Correct. And did you use First Samuel twenty-eight, eight through fourteen for that? Uh, what was that? Um, uh, when he was calling, when when he was when Saul was calling on Samuel. Yes, sir. You, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. I guess I was getting a hard, having a hard time kind of, I guess, reconcile how that showed that that, that all um, deceased were Elohim. So I guess I was hoping you explain it a little more. Okay, no problem. Uh, if you look up, uh, if you go there, let's go there right quick. Uh, that's for, you said first, it's first time you ate, right? Yes, sir. No, first time you're 28. First time you're 28. Okay, let's go there. Um, So the, uh, the last time we met to those who were just getting on, um, who was not on and was not following us, one of the things that we was trying to show and trying to demonstrate is uh, Elohim. Uh, Elohim, uh, the ancient writer, the, uh, the first century Jew, when they heard Elohim, they did not think of Elohim in the same way we would think of it in our modern context, right? Because when we say Elohim, we think about Yahweh. However, in their context, when they hear Elohim, they hear, they thought of gods and different type of gods. And so we tried to show um, uh, the different type of gods as it relates to Elohim. Anything that was an uh, idol god, uh, it was considered Elohim. And so what Sister Hawkins is referencing is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 28. Uh, we started verse 3. Uh, now Samuel had died in all of Israel and lamented for him and buried him in Ramoth in his own city. And Saul uh, put the mediums and the spirits out of the land. So Saul had already said, I don't want nobody to go see any mediums. Don't go see nobody uh, who going to call race that I don't want you to call anybody and talk to anybody. He's already called, he's made that uh, decree. But watch verse four. The Bible says, then the Philistines gathered together came and encamped some, so, so Saul to, uh, to uh, gather all Israel together. They encamped at Gilead, verse five. When Saul saw the army of Philistines, he was afraid. His heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams or by Aaron or by the prophets. Watch this. Then Saul said to the servant, find me a woman who is a medium that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to her, in fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Edor. So Saul disguised himself, put on his clothes, went with the two men with him and came unto the woman by night and said, please conduct a censor for me and bring for me the one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cast off the mediums and the spurious from the land why then you lay a, a snare for my life to cause me to die? Verse 10, and Saul swore to her by the Lord saying, as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. So Saul is disguising himself 
She doesn't know it's Saul at this point. Then, then verse 11, the woman said, uh, whom shall I bring for you? And he said, bring up Samuel for me. Now, Samuel has been dead for quite some time. He, so he wants to have a conversation or dialogue with Samuel. Verse number 12, the Bible says, when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. Uh, the woman spoke to Saul saying, why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, do not be afraid. Uh, what do you see? That's verse 13, Sister Hawkins. And I saw a spirit or Elohim ascending out of the earth. So if you, so, so to answer your question, so if you go back to verse 13 and you do a word study on the word spirit there, that's the same word we get the word Elohim. So that's, so that's, that's where we understand and we know that when we die, we are considered an Elohim because we are in that realm. Get, you follow me, Sister Hawkins, on that? Yes, I do. So that's that's where we get that that understanding from. So, thank you. No problem. Anybody have any other questions before we go on tonight? Like this, not we don't want to rush uh, tonight class, and like I said, I don't want to rush this series. I want to make sure everybody understands exactly where we are. Uh, the purpose of what we're trying to do, we're trying to establish uh, the spiritual realm in the unseen realm. We want to establish that so everybody understand where we're, where we're talking about. I showed you uh, the first couple of weeks uh, as it relates to spiritual warfare. Uh, and we talked about the divine counsel, right? We talk about how, how God allows other beings, other Elohims, to make decisions when it comes to uh, things, just weigh in on decisions. We kind of looked at that. We expressed that because, uh, you know, I didn't learn that in VBS. I didn't learn that in, in, in Sunday school, right? And so there's a, there's a different understanding when it comes to spiritual warfare. When you understand the spiritual realm, it'll bless your life in such a way that uh, you'll be blessed by it and you'll be able to see scripture in a different light and you'll be able to get to, to connect the dots. Right. We talked about those different gods. So there are more than one God. There's not more, more than one Yahweh or Jehovah, Jehovah, but there's only there are many Elohims, but there's only one, there's no God Elohim like Yahweh. So we try to describe that through our study uh, to give us the understanding that warfare is real. So when they was worshiping idols in the Old Testament, uh, I, they don't idol worship, idolatry. Uh, in gods, those different gods, they were real Elohims. There was not something that was fake or not real. And so that's why we wanted to make sure we understand that this world for Ray in is for real. And so each and every day of our lives, when we wake up in the morning, we got to come with the understanding that we are in warfare. And we talked about that you're either pleasing one spirit or another spirit, right? And so it's going to be very important for us to understand that, right? We talked, you know, just doing a quick review before I go into tonight's lesson. We talked about uh, how Genesis 6, right, the sons of God, uh, you know, mated with the daughters of men, gave birth to ne uh, Nephilim, right? And we talked about all of that. The sons of God in Old Testament, when you read sons of God, it refers to uh, these being heavenly beings. So when you read sons of God in the Old Testament, uh, it's not talking about um, it's not talking about humans, right? It's talking about these heavenly beings, right? And so what, what, that's where we are so far. And so tonight, what I want to do as we, as, we, as we continue our study, I, I want to slow down a bit. And what I want to do, I want to get us to a certain point because we're, uh, uh, probably the next go round, the next Wednesday, I want to show us nine ranks of angels in the in the angel system, hierarchy of angels that we talked about the divine council, but we need to put some make some sense out of it and see it in in a hierarchy, right? Because they have different responsibilities, uh, they have different they have different roles, and so oftentimes when we say angel, we put every, all angels in the same category which biblically speaking, all of them, they was not in the same category. So we're going to talk about that. But I want to, before I do that, I'll I probably show you that, that, uh, that hierarchy 
before we close and we'll kind of pick back up on it. But I do want to show you is that when we talked about how we're influenced by one spirit or another spirit, it's going to be very important for us to understand that behavior that we see, that we just think that is normal behavior, we got to place those behaviors somewhere. We can't dismiss it like it's nothing. I need us to get that tonight. Now, this is gonna help. This is gonna help everybody tonight to understand that what Satan is trying to do, he's trying to put you in a trap. We talked about that on last Wednesday as well as Sunday. He wants to put you in a trap, right? He wants you to think that ill behavior is just you being you. And I want us to suggest tonight, not so. Uh, I want to suggest tonight that when it comes to spiritual warfare, uh, I want to suggest that you are either being pleased, you are either pleasing one spirit or another spirit. So this is what I want. I don't want us to do. I want us to come with this, this as we study this series, look at yourself and to ask yourself, have I fallen into a trap? Some of us are in traps right now and we don't even realize it and we dismissed it, and you angry with somebody, holding a grudge against somebody, and you don't even recognize you are being a pawn of the devil, right? Uh, you angry with your spouse right now. You can't get along with a family member, and all because you think uh, it's nothing, but you don't even realize it's spiritual warfare, right? So let me show you a scripture tonight, some scriptures tonight, and we'll, we'll talk about these scriptures. And what I want to do in the light of this, uh, I asked Brother Newsom to help me read. Uh, he may quote from the CEV as well as the New Living. And But I want us to be able to look at these particular passages of scripture and try to see uh, if we are guilty of yielding to these different spirits that are influenced. So when the Bible talks about certain things in scripture, uh, don't look at it just like, are they just being them or they just being evil? No, they being influenced. And so that's what we want to look at. Look at, look at, go with me to Titus chapter three tonight. Ch Titus chapter three. And um, let's look at verse number nine through 11. Um, uh, Titus chapter three. And verses nine. Now, Brother Newsom, are you there? Can you read for me uh, from the, uh, the CEV? The, I want you to read the same passage from the New Living Translation. So you want me to read the CEV and New Living? Correct, right. Right. The first one will be the CEV. Titus three. It says, but don't have anything to do with stupid arguments about ancestors and stay away from disagreements and quarrels about the law of Moses. Such arguments are useless and senseless. Warn troublemakers once or twice, then don't have anything else to do with them. You know their minds are twisted and their own sins show how guilty they are. Okay, read from New Living. Now everybody write that scripture down and I want y'all to be thinking about the spirit that is behind what Paul is addressing here. Listen to the think of think with your spiritual warfare, but think of the spirit that he's addressing. Okay, Brother Newsom. All right, this is New Living. Verse nine: Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees, or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing division among you. Give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. Now I need you to notice the spirit. This is a, a, a person who causes division or trouble. Um, they, they cause all of this. And Paul says to Titus, first of all, don't get caught up in useless arguments concerning the Jewish law by keeping the law. Don't get caught up in that. He says, don't fall into that trap with them. Don't get caught up in that. He says, I want you to know something. Once you have warned the person who has a spirit 
that is divisive, he says, have nothing to do with them. I need you to understand that. Now he's talking of, you know, heard me on Sunday when I said, you cannot, you can be gracious with the person, but you cannot be gracious with the spirit, that spirit, the spirit that you're being influenced by being this divisiveness spirit, right? Now, now you got to ask yourself tonight, have you ever fought, fell in that place where you found yourself a troublemaker? Now that's on a question only you can ask, or have you ever been to a, in a place where you was the one causing division? None wasn't going right. You didn't like what you saw. You always had something to say. You was the one causing the trouble. Now, what happens is what's going on, you are being influenced by spirit. I wanted you to understand that. So when scripture teaches us these everything, don't dismiss it like it's just everyday life. Okay? If, if you are operating in that spirit, I want you to know that spirit is not from God, right? Having divisive spirit. Now watch this. Go to go to First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one. And I want us to look at verse number eighteen through twenty. Brother Newsom, read from the New Living for me. First Timothy chapter one, eighteen through twenty. All right. First Timothy chapter 1, 18. Yes. Timothy, my son, here are my instructions for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battles to cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith had been shipwrecked. Verse 20. Oh, Lord. Ham, Ham, I'm sorry. Hymenaeus and Alexander are two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to Satan so they might learn not to blaspheme God. Notice what Paul said. Paul said in verse number 20, he handed them over or delivered them to Satan so they can learn not to blaspheme God. Now, what was he doing? He was dealing with the spirit. What spirit did they have? Stubbornness. Amen. I want you to know, I told you already, when you find yourself stubborn, 1 Samuel 15 says, stubborn, in, stubborn to be stubborn is like idolatry. It's, it's you, you worship your own thoughts and your own opinions. Even, even when somebody can bring you something and show you facts of why you should change something or why you can do better, in your mind, you still say, I'm going to do what I want to do. Anybody ever been there before? Have anybody ever told you something and you had an aha moment, but you didn't want to admit to them that you got what they were saying because you wanted to be mad? Stump, that's a spirit. You stubborn. You're caught up in your own opinions, your own thoughts. And now your own thoughts, your own opinion have become your God. And, and, and Paul says, listen, how you handle that is you take your hands off of it. You deliver them to Satan and let, and let God deal with it. So that's a word for some of us tonight who are trying to change folks' stubbornness. That's a word tonight for some of us who think we can change other people, right? That what we need to know and what we need to understand tonight, that there are certain, that when you have confronted a person and talked to a person, the Bible says they have rejected their own conscience and they have become shipwrecked in the faith. And you saying, what's wrong with them? Their faith have been shipwrecked. They see truth. They know they need to change. They know they need to do better. But in their own heart of hearts, they still going to do what they want. It's stubbornness. Don't dismiss that as though that's just them. 
Because you don't know what we'll say. Oh, they just being them. No, it's a spirit they being under and under the influence. And tonight, maybe you may be under the influence of stubbornness. That spirit that's operating in your heart. That God says, because you don't want to be delivered. You don't want God to put his hands off of you. No, you don't want God to give you up for this cause. You want to be, you want to be the one to hear. So open to the word of God, open to the spirit of God, that what you say when you hear or when you see uh, someone who brought something, you don't want to be the, the person who caused the vision. You definitely don't want to be a person who has a stubborn heart. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Y'all follow that. Okay, go to Matthew chapter 18. And I'm gonna read from the King James and I may get Brother Newsom to read from the New Living. Matthew chapter 18. And um, I want you to meet me at verse number 15. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 15. I want you to watch this. The Bible says, now, now remember when we were reading what we're thinking about, we're thinking about spirits. We're thinking about being honored. This, this, is, not just, this is not just normal life. This is when you are influenced by another spirit that is not of God. That's what we're talking about. Watch this. Uh, moreover, if your brother sins against you and go tell him his fault between, go tell him his fault between you and him alone. Y'all see that? So watch, watch, watch what God has given us to do. If my brother or my sister sin against me, right? My responsibility is to go to you and you by yourself. Say amen, somebody. That's my responsibility. If I had time, I would show you when you don't do that, you are, you are operating in another spirit. And that's the, the spirit of division. You become a troublemaker when somebody has offended you and you don't go to the person to tell them they're offended, but you tell somebody else, you have just been, you've been, you have fell into the trap of being used by Satan. But, but that's a different story. But, but watch what he said. He said, if he hears you, you have what? You have gained your brother. So if I go to my brother, you offended me. This is how you have offended me, right? I have gained my brother. But watch this. But if he would not hear you, take two, you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Now he's talking about, this is Old Testament theology, that you will take two or three with you to establish every word. So he says, what I'm going to do, if you offend me, I go to you or you alone. If you don't listen to me, Watch this. I take two or three with. Now I don't. Now what I don't do, I don't go tell the two or three what I need. I don't tell them what's going on first. I bring them in on the conversation. I mean, I bring them in when we when we meet together. I don't tell them. I don't have a meeting before we meet. Okay, y'all y'all follow that. But he says, verse seventeen. But if he refused to hear them, tell it to the church. But watch this. But if he refused to hear the church, let him be to you. What? A heathen and a tax collector. What are you saying, uh, Jesus? Jesus says that person is so influenced by another spirit that they won't take heed to spiritual uh, 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 advice. They won't take heed to it. So because of that, just like what Paul says, I'm going to hand them over. I'm going to consider them a heathen or public. But watch what else to say. Look at verse number 18. Uh, surely I say unto you, watch this, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Verse 19, watch this. And again, I say unto you that if two or you are green on earth concerning anything they may ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For by two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst also. Now let me tell you. Let me now let me tell you. Um, I know y'all heard both of these last two scriptures quoted a lot. Probably heard it out of context. Um, verse nineteen often is used to say we're gonna pray on a certain matter. And we're going to pray on something. Y'all heard that before? Let's two or three pray on something and we agree with it. God, God will hear us. But that ain't what it's saying. You, you exegeted that. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, when verse number 20, ain't got nothing to do with when, when you, because your church ain't growing 
and you got two or three people there and you say, as long as the two or three together in my name, God is in the midst also, we can have church. That ain't what it's saying. That's exegesis. Do with the context of what he's dealing with. Verses 19, he's saying, if I go to my brother and he does not hear me, and I go take two or three and we come together and we agree together that what was done was unspiritual. God says, I agree with y'all. That's verse 19. God says, when you handle it this way, God says, you got agreement in heaven because you did it the right way. And then he says, when a two or three, I gather in my name. In my name means not just by a statement. In my name means as his representatives. Lord have mercy. If you gather in my name as my representatives, I am there also in the midst. So, so he's telling us that that spirit, that spirit of stubbornness, because this person's stubborn, I'm not going to hear you, right? I'm not going to take heed, right? That person, he says, is considered a heathen and a tax collector. Now, that's a word for husbands and wives that when you are in the midst of arguing about a matter and it gets so heated, it becomes so devilishness. Amen. It becomes so heated and now neither one of you are hearing each other. Now, you got to ask yourself, what spirit is that in the midst? Amen. What spirit is that? And so I, I, I want us to understand as we as we continue to talk that this spirit that we're talking about, this spirit, these spirits are actively against us to hurt us. So not two or three conspirators against, against somebody else because you don't like them. Or, no, no. So yeah, the two or three, again, the two or three are people who are spiritual individuals who will come in the matter and hear the case. But I can't have an ode against Sister Carter, right? And go tell Brother Chapman, Brother Chapman, this is what's going on. No, you can't, that's, that's all wrong. He don't, no, I'm going to say, Brother Chapman, amen. Sister Irby, can y'all come with me for a minute? I need you to come with me. I'm going to bring them into the conversation. I'm not going to have the conversation with them before, before, before while Sister Carter's not around. So that's, that's the case in, in that case. So, um, I just want to show us that spirit, showing us that you can be influenced. So look at different behaviors, different things that you may think that I'm just being me or, uh, you know, that's it. they just being them. I don't want you to look at it like that. I need you to look at it in a sense to say, am I operating in the right spirit? Am I, am I yielding to the spirit of God or am I yielding to the spirit of the enemy? That makes sense. I saw a question. I'm going to answer that question. Before we end, I saw a question. I go back to it. Now, what I want you to do is now go with me. Go with me to Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. But what I want to do, I just want to show you uh, these behaviors that sometimes we, uh, sometimes we just uh, we run across and we dismiss. Because I want to show you that this is spiritual warfare that we're talking about. Second Timothy chapter three, um, brother uh, Newsom, are can you read for me uh, the the uh, the New Living Translation? Yes, sir. What 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 verse we start? Uh, start verse one. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. All right, and it reads, "You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times." For people will love one only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. Keep reading. They will act, oh Lord, they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. 
Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable, vulnerable women who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such, such women are forever following new teachings, but they, were, they are never able to understand the truth. These teachers oppose the truth just as, is it Giannis and Jambres oppose, oppose God? They have depraved minds and a counterfeit faith, but they won't get away with this for long. Someday, everyone will recognize what fools they are, just as with Giannis and Jambres. Now, now, I want you to understand something. The list that he gives are spirits that happen in such a way that we are influenced by and we operate in those different spirits. Now watch this. I want you to see something. Notice the first one on the list. Lovers of themselves. Do y'all know what the lovers of themselves is? That's a spirit that you operate under. To love yourself is to be selfish. Hmm. Amen. Walls. Lover, that spirit, and you, and what you say is, I'm just looking out for me. Now you selfish. You are under the influence of another spirit. And in your mind, you just separate, you just try to take care of you. Listen, you take care of you, but God never meant for it to just be you that you think about. He never meant that. Lovers of themselves are people who walk around and they just selfish. All they think about is them. Oh, I need to, I need to stay somewhere. I, I feel something right through in there because here it is. It's interesting. Isn't it interesting that oftentimes when other people fall on hard times and they ask for help from you, and you got, you may not get, can get them everything, but you can help them with something. You may not give them the $10, but you can give them $5. But because you're so caught up in you, you won't do it. Selfishness. But when the, when the tables turn, and it's now you the one that needs $10, and all you need somebody to do is give you $5. Do y'all do make sense? I want you to think about the spirit of selfishness. That's not, it. you can be selfish in your marriage. You can be fit, uh, selfish on your job. You can be selfish as you work for the, you can be selfish in so many different areas, but that's a spirit. Don't dismiss that. It's just me being me. You got to ask yourself, have I been operating under this spirit and didn't even realize it? Has I been, have I been operating under the spirit of selfishness when it's all just about you? Amen. Watch this. Not only, not only, self, not only lovers of themselves, but watch what he says. He says, lovers of money. That's greed. Oh, let me linger there a while. God is not against us uh, having or possessing stuff. What he's against is the stuff possessing us. And what happens if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves so caught up in greed. And what we'll do, we'll serve money and not serve God. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. For he will love one or hate the other. Right? or despise one or a hold to the other. You can't serve God and mammon. Mammon is money, it's greed, right? And some of us need to think about it, that what we'll do, and it's interesting to me, and I'm not, I'm not against hustles, I'm not against you starting your own businesses, but some of us will go so far is that we'll, we will go so hard for our business, but won't go hard for God. Amen. You know, it's interesting. People who are in the network marketing, 
they'll get on phone calls. They'll get on, hey amen. You know, y'all say that tea and coffee and all that stuff. You'll get on phone calls every night. You'll stay, you'll stay doing the two or three. You'll do phone bliss, but you can't do nothing for the Lord. You know why? Because it's greed. You are chasing after a dollar. And, God, and, and see, I want you to know something. It's your influence. You're under the influence of a spirit. And you think it's just stuff. You think you're just trying to do better. God wants you to do better for yourself, but not the, at the expense of putting him second. Amen. God says, I'm going to be number one because I refuse to be number two. That's why he told the Jews in, in the Ten Commandments, he says, I'm a jealous God. What are you jealous of? He's jealous of those other Elohim. You put before me. So I need us to get understand something. Paul says, the lovers of themselves, they love us of money. But then he said, they're boasters. To be, to be boasters, that Greek word there means empty presenter. These are people who walk around showing and acting like they're, some, they're, 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 they're somebody, but they're really empty on the inside. Yeah, y'all know. Yeah, it's 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 when you when you find yourself to a point where you're so influenced that you will brag, be braggadocious on everything, knowing that you really don't have it all together. And what happens is, what happens, what happens, it makes you feel good, and it helps you sometimes with your own insecurity. Amen. You know how you know you know people good at putting stuff on Facebook. They put relationships. They put their cars. They put their houses. Listen, all I'm saying is you gotta check your spirit of why you do that. Oh Lord have mercy! You gotta you gotta figure out um, what is my what is my point in doing that. Oftentimes, it's, it's a lot of the stuff is insecurity. It's insecurity. So it's, it's empty presenters. Watch this. Proud. He says, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, brochures. But he says, proud. This is arrogant. This is a sense of arrogance that I am better than you. That's a spirit. Right? One thing I've learned a long time ago, we all live in glass houses. We all are, 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 are dust from the earth. Right, but I want you to just watch the list that he's talking. These, these are things that are influenced by the spirit. Then he says, "Blasphemy." The word "blasphemy" there means slandering. You speak ill words against somebody else. Oh, I know I'm in somebody's driveway. It is when you have a dialogue with another individual and you speak ill against somebody else you slander them that is blasphemy that is you are under the influence lord have mercy of a spirit an evil spirit is demonic that my friend is not of god but then he goes on to say disobedient to parents these are these are you know we see that today and that's happening in our country you see that 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 we have generational curses, and I told you those on Sunday, uh, that we have parents who won't submit to authority, who won't, who won't model what it means to, of submission. Then their children watch them do it to, to their authority, so they turn around and to do it to you. And now you're angry and you're upset because you expect them to honor you, but they watch you dishonor so many other authority figures. Mm -hmm. Spirit. That's disobedient parents. But then it says unthankful. That's literally y'all ungrateful. Have you ever have you ever found yourself always complaining about some? Have you found yourself always finding something wrong with everything? I mean, nothing going right. You complain. Listen, if you just and I guarantee, listen. Tomorrow, just just listen. Just count how many times you complain in a day; it'll shock you. That spirit, that spirit, child of God, is not a, of God. Because I read somewhere, rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. Right? 
that so what happens is when things happen in your life, tra tra uh, storms happen, uh, trials happen. What happens is what the devil wants to do. The devil wants you and I to throw in the towel. He wants us to to get to a point where we're we find ourselves complaining, we're griping, amen. We 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 find ourselves ungrateful. So that's that spirit. Now watch this. But then he goes on to say unholy. I just want y'all to notice the list. Notice the list. He's just not talking about bad behavior. He's talking about a spirit. He says, unholy, disregard that which is sacred. I said, disregard that which is sacred. You don't have, you don't take anything sacred. It's when you see, when you, the stuff that you ought to honor, you dishonor it. What God has called holy, you dishonor what God has called holy. When we come together and, and assemble ourselves together, amen, even at a time like this, even on Zoom, and we assembly, we are the church that's meet, amen, in South Haven, we come together, it's a sacred moment. Y'all realize it's sacred, right? And when we come together, um, our attention, our mindset, amen, is to be attentive to God. But when you, when, when we're in a setting like this and you don't find this place right here, a sacred place where you're trying to get close to God and you're doing everything else, you're doing everything else, but you don't take this moment as sacred, it's a distraction from the enemy. He wants you to treat this like everything else. That's why you will mop the floor and try to and, and do Bible study at the same time because it's a distraction. And the spirit don't want you, no, that evil spirit don't want you to be in tune to what is sacred. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen. This is a sacred moment. Um, but watch this. Without natural affection. Now, I thought that was an interesting term. Uh, it's this, this term, natural, without natural affection, is found two times in the New Testament. Is found in Romans 1 and is found here in 2 Timothy. Uh, it literally means unloving and unsociable. Unloving, unsociable. Unloving, unsociable. Say it one more time, beard. Unloving and unsociable. The unnatural, watch this. Um, this thing about without natural effect, it gives the connotation that you are supposed to be naturally affected to your family. You are supposed, it's not natural not for a mother not to love her children. It's not natural for a father not to love his children. That's not natural. And what you do when it comes to natural, you find yourself being unloving and unsociable. That's a spirit that's going on in the spiritual battle. That's why the enemy won't husbands and wives to fight. Because when you are in, when you are in a marriage, that marriage is supposed to be a cruise ship, not a battleship. It, you are not, you, there are sometimes you are going, you are going to, you're going to disagree, but you're supposed to have a battle every day. Not about it. What you know what's happening? It's not, it's not them. It's not your spouse. It's a spirit that's operating that wants to cause the divide. Right? So we got to stop it because we don't want to be unloving and unsociable with what's, we, what's supposed to come natural. Do you see the spirit? Watch what it is. Truth, truth breakers. Uh, it's a it's a it's a Greek word that literally to describe those who cannot be persuaded to enter into a covenant. Uh, so watch this: such an individual will cease hostility and won't accept reconciliation. What is it? What is true birth? This is a person. True birth. I, I need to spend some time on it. This is good. Truth. Truth break. What is he talking about? It is when me. I'm so, so I'm using you as an example tonight. It is when me and Sister Carter have an argument and we are, we are, we have this, this, this go back and forth between us. Amen. And, and I'm, and, and I'm mad and she mad, but 
Now, Sister Carter said, I'm going to yield to the spirit of God and I'm going to go talk to Brother Beard. And I and she called Brother Beard and said, Brother Beard, can we talk? No, I don't want to talk. I ain't got nothing to talk about. I'm good. I don't want to talk. That's, that's what he's talking about here. You don't even want to reconcile. I mean, you're so angry and you're under the influence of another spirit that you won't yield to God's spirit to reconcile and, and to kill the hostility, but you're under the influence. And you think you, and what you say to yourself, I ain't gonna let nobody make a fool out of me. I'm gonna feed them with a long handle spoon. Y'all know how we talk, amen. That spirit, let me call it, let me kill that demon tonight. That spirit ain't of God. Because we, because remember what we're talking about, spiritual warfare, we're talking about this, this warfare we're in and, and he'll do everything he can to get you distracted and to make you feel like it's just normal. Watch this, watch, watch this. False accusers. Now I thought this was interesting. It's a Greek word, diplios, which means devil. Hmm. False accuser. Do the Greek word study on that. It's diplios in the Greek. It means devil. To engage in slander is when you find something to accuse somebody of and you slander them. Diblios, you are working for the devil. <laughs> when, when, when in Job 1, when, when, and I told you that in Job 1, when you read about when, when the uh, Satan is, is really the Greek, I mean, the Hebrew language there is Hasatan, which means it was a job description of the Hasatan to say to, uh, to look at the individual, right? And to bring that back to, to God in the divine council and saying what I saw on the individual. It is when you as a person, you engage in slander of somebody else. You slander that character. You slander who they are, right? And at the same time, you bless God. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that you can bless God with the same mouth you curse somebody else out with? Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that you can say a prayer and say amen to the prayer? And as soon as you say amen to the prayer, you can get on the phone and doll and slander someone else. False accuser under the influence of that. I told you that you can't hurt God, hurt God's children and not hurt God. It's impossible. But I want you to see that. Um, uh, without self-control, right? That's, they, you're just all over the place. No self-control. You can't control your temper. You went to a person who go from 100 to uh, uh, a zero to 100, no self-control. I'm, I'm, what I want you doing, I'm trying to show you that you are operating not in the spirit of God, but these are different spirits that you're operating in. I'm trying to get done with this before we get before we get done. Why, uh, fears. Now, 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 listen. Now, this was funny to me when I studied this word fears. The word fears from the Greek means savage. Means savage. You know how y'all singing them songs? I'm just a savage. You don't want to, yeah, I promise you, you, you under the demonic. That will fierce me. Fierce is, is, is savage, not tame, wild, right? So stop singing this song, I'm a savage. You don't even know, the devil got you working for him and you don't even know it. You walking around here talking about you a savage. No, uh, that's working in the demonic. And, and I, I want you to see that. I want you to see he's using these different uh, these different characteristics of, of what, what people do, but these are spirits operating, right? Watch this. Despisers of that which is good. It's an enemy to the anything that's good. So what you do, you it's an enemy. You, it's an enemy. Anything that's good, you're against it. You ever met somebody like that? You ever met yourself doing that? Anything that's good, or somebody else that you you against it. But then... He says, traitors, traitors. Now watch this. This word traitors literally mean treacherous. It's performing harmful acts to someone who trusts you. 
is when you are portrayed. It's when we are close. And I thought we was close. But you did harmful things to me. Because you knew I trust you. So you did harmful things to me. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. How do I have to walk in the demonic? Uh, heady. The word heady there means restless. Without thinking or caring about the consequences of an action. So these, though these are people who will do stuff and they don't play the tape all the way through. Yeah, you'll do something, you won't even play the tape all the way through. You won't think about how would my actions affect somebody else? What I'm about to do, how will this hurt someone else? You don't think that along the line. So what happens is you 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 do it without then you say, well, I wasn't thinking. It's because you was under the influence. And then he and then he used the word high-minded to be blind or proud or conceited to render foolish or or stupid. It's it is when watch why you're high-minded though. He used the illustration here, uh, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 9. He says, um, he used high mind, he said, having having uh, traitors, having a haughty, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So your soul high-minded, your soul into what you're doing, that you love the, pl the pleasures more than you love God. Do y'all see that? Uh, and then he goes on to say, watch what he says. He says in verse seven, always learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Isn't it crazy that you can read all these books you can learn how to study, but you never apply what you know. You come to Bible class, you listen, you say amen, you take notes, but you never apply what you learn. And then he gives these two fellows when Moses had to deal with those music, magicians who were doing everything Moses was doing. You know why they was doing it? Because they was operating on a different God. They was operating on, that's why they could do it. And it's interesting, uh, Paul goes on to say, but uh, they won't make it. And he says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of their own. And so I, so I want you, what I want you to do tonight, uh, at some point, may not tonight, probably tomorrow, I want you to go back and look at this list. And I want you to look at yourself and ask yourself, am I guilty of any of these? And if the answer is yes, if the answer is yes, then you got to admit that you was under the influence of a different spirit and it wasn't of God. Now, I, I was going to give y'all the nine ranks tonight, but I'm running out. I ran out of time. But what we'll do, we'll go through these nine ranks um, on next Wednesday. And what I want to do is I showed you the divine council. I already talked about the divine council. Uh, I told you who they were. Uh, and they, they heavily that heavily host. I want to go over those nine ranks. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna take our time. We're gonna. I'm going to. I, I give what I do next week. I give you the nine. And what we'll do? We'll just deal uh, with them uh, uh, a couple at a time. Now, uh, what why I'm doing it because I I don't want you to start reading. I want you to start re, don't read scripture and just read it like you're just looking at words. I want you, when you begin to study, I want you to be able to connect these dots because you don't realize, man, God, spiritual warfare is so real, man. And God is God has been trying to help you the whole time. You've just been ignoring. God has been trying to help you. This is this stuff you in right now that you've asked God to help you out of. God said, I sent that. I sent your, I sent your, your solution to you a long time ago. But because you're not in tune the way you should be, you fail. You don't, you're not in tune with God to the point where you need to be where God needs you to be. So let me let me answer these questions uh, before I close. <clears throat> what if there's someone that is asked for the things to have on a job, don't really talk to you, but ask for money? Or what if you reach out to someone regularly, but won't reply back, but ask for money, but ignores you? Do you still work out of the spirit and still give it to them. Now it just depends. Now let me say that it depends on um, 
the certain I don't know the I don't know the whole scenario, the big picture. So it may be some other stuff in there I don't know and understand. But here's the, here's what I do know. Here's what I do know that when I help somebody, it's never because of what they can do for me or what they haven't did for me. Right? If I help somebody, it's all because I'm doing it because of the love of God that's in me. So I know that's a that's a general question, but I don't I need to know the whole scenario to kind of answer that. Uh, because there are other times where you have to you have to establish boundaries with people, and that depends on how it is. There are certain boundaries that you have to establish with people, some kind of like what Jesus did. Jesus established boundaries. If I had time, I would show you where Jesus had healed a, a group of people, and Jesus was tired. And the disciples came, said, Jesus, there's some more folks going need to be healed. And Jesus said, now nah, we're going to the next town. What Jesus was doing, he was establishing boundaries. So there, there, there's a twofold question today. It just depends. But you got to know when the, where, where the draw line is, where the boundary, or oh, this person really need my help. They need my help out of the love of God. I help them. I think that's why Paul says, uh, if, you're in, uh, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If he's thirsty, to give them something to drink. Even with their ill will towards you, you still do right by them. So I hope that uh, helped in some way. If not, you can reach out to them and I can try to answer that in a different way. Um, let me find some question. Um, okay, so I have a question that can answer. Okay. Are Elohim's angels, or can be an or can be an angel? Is so what level of angel? So Elohim, the the clear definition of Elohim, anything that's in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm, is an Elohim. So that's any that's as an that's okay. So when we say angel, I understand what, but there are different heart, there are different levels of angels. But all of them, are Elohim. we have to sixty people tonight. Yeah, so all so all of them are all of them are Elohims, all of them. So when you talk about Elohims, you're not just talking about God. You're talking about these different uh, angels, demons can be an Elohim, right? Um, so you know the deceased can be an Elohim. So there are different Elohims. But to answer your question is that are Elohim angels or can yeah Elohims are angels. Uh, and but there are different type of hierarchy in the in the process, but all of them are still angels, and we'll deal with that on uh, next next Wednesday. So so we ourselves are not because uh, we're in the flesh. We're not Elohim's in the flesh because we're still in the flesh. But when you die, you do become uh, Elohim because you're a part of that realm. Okay. Uh, any other questions tonight? Any other questions? Hey, can I say something? That yes, was sir. a good that was a good lesson, brother. And yo, uh, you know, when you talk, it brought me back. Uh, there's a book out, and I put it in the chat called The Beta Satan. And that's exactly what that book talks about, how Satan traps you in with it with offense. Basically, there's like a Greek word yeah. in the New Testament, uh scandalon. And basically what it, a scandal on is, is an offense. It's, it's something designed to trap you. And like you were saying, uh, into a certain spirit. So if you don't forgive or something like that, I mean, the devil traps you into unforgiveness or bitterness. And if you're not careful, you know, you'll develop what was called a stronghold a made up mind to do wrong. And so, you know, that, you know, that spirit stuff is so true and important. Even, you know, in the Bible, it talks about how God even gave certain people up that had a reprobate mind. So right. like, that's so important though. So very good lesson, very good lesson. Very, so and something that I can definitely go back and look at this list. Amen, amen. That's good. Thanks, Brother Chapman. But again, the scripture that you just quoted, Romans 1, that's another scripture that will be a good homework assignment to go back to because he gives another list there in Romans. And then he turns around and says, 
uh, because they did not retain God in their knowledge. They knew God, but they didn't glorify him as God. You see how you can know you can know God exists, but not do what he said? He says, for this cause, God gave him up. In other words, God says, if somebody says, right, will God give me up? He sure will. If you decide that you're going to be stubborn and you're going to stay stuck in where you are, who you are, well, somebody, this is just me. Well, God said, you know what? I'll take my hands off of you. I'll let you be that what you want to be. I'll hand you over. And then when you get tired, then you'll come back to me. And, and, I, you know, and, and, and I don't mean no harm, y'all, but I think that may be why America is where we are now. I think, I think God, you know, you know, nobody was, nobody was praying like this for other countries when they was dealing with stuff. When they were dealing with struggles and a hunger and famine and diseases, America was doing life like it was nothing. But God said, since you think you're great, let me send you something. And until we get to the point where we say, God, you know what? I submit. Because I haven't yet heard nobody in, in our national capital say, let's do a national day of prayer. And God may be saying that it's spiritual warfare uh, indeed. But I, I want you to understand something. God says, I got a plan. And listen, I, I probably ain't trying to hold y'all tonight, but I just want you to know, if you just knew how many beings were around us in the unseen, if God would let you see right now the unseen world, it'll blow your mind. You know how many angels in your house right now? Lord, y'all don't, y'all, see, I believe this stuff because the Bible talks about it. And so what you think, you think, you know, somebody do you wrong, you say, I shouldn't have said that. You think you gave yourself that thought? You had some help. You may dismiss it, but you had help. Can I show y'all one scripture? And I promise I'm done. I promise I'm done. Go to, go to Matthew 18. I was going to show this next week, but I'm going to show you this now. Uh, Matthew chapter 18. And um, Matthew's 18. What verse is that? Matthew's 18. Hold on, y'all. If I can find it. Matthew's 18. Okay, yeah. Matthew chapter 18. Uh, somebody read. Bro, News, can you read that for me? Matthews 18, and verse number 10. Verse 10? Mm -hmm. Does it matter what verse? It doesn't. All right, this will be the NLT. Beware that you don't look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly Father. Okay, read from the CEV. I sure will. All right. Okay, that was Matthew 18. What's the verse again, brother? I'm sorry. Verse 10. Verse 10. Okay. All right. Don't be cruel to any of these little ones. I promise you, their angels are always with my Father in heaven. Now, wait a minute, y'all. Wait a minute. He's talking about the little children, the context. And he says, don't mistreat them because they angel is always with them. You know what that is? Let me tell you what that is. That is where we get the, con the, the thought pattern or the concept of guardian angel. That's where we get that concept from. It is, it ain't for play play. Always watching. Always now I gotta now, now I'm gonna leave y'all. I'm gonna leave y'all there. Now if you think of you got a good angel that's watching, what you think about the evil one that's watching? If you think a if you think a good one is watching you and looking, what you think with the evil one is doing? Which means they learn, they know you, they know your stuff, they know how to influence you. And so 
They already, see, you don't realize this spiritual warfare. They already know what ticks you off. They already know what's get under your skin, the evil one, right? And so there's a fight. There's a battle. And so, and so what I want to do, I want to, I want to, and then, and matter of fact, that's the lowest. Angels are the lowest one in the rank. They are number nine in the rank. Which means there are other eight others that the Bible talks about that we don't ever, we ever talk about. But they are real beings in, in, in the heavenly host. So that's all we have tonight. If you let anybody have any other questions or prayer requests, we'll end on that note. Um, end on that note. I pray something was said tonight uh, that would help you and it will bless your life uh, to a way that it can help us to be where we need to be for the cause of Christ. If you have any questions, uh, please make sure you send those questions to me. I'll make sure I get them and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, I'm going to take a prayer request tonight. Any prayer request? Any prayer requests? 